Hi, the second video that I want to show you related the 2D parametric array is a different type of uh, array actually we can do. Now I will go for a number of copies in the overall distance. So that's mean I will give the overall width and the overall uh, height as we as I've done in the previous uh, type of array in the previous video and instead in this part I'm going to give the number of copies. And believe it or not, all what you have to do is to add this in the front of the A. And, and that will define uh, the number and the state of the distance. Uh, let's run that. And before, uh, you got to select this guy first. And then you hit run. And it generates for us the required uh, overall width 50 by 25 and the number of copies. 5 by 5 in each direction so let's have a let's wait for it until it's uh, finished calculating and here it goes so that's uh, again that's what we asked for that's the that's a 5 by 5 again and that's 50 by 25 from that object starting from the zero zero point and if we zoom in here see this 50 for the x it's been here 50 at the end up overall width while this 5 now is in here instead of here so without this if you remember that's a 0 5 10 and so on when you add this you know like it's a change to 1 2 3 4 5 values Okay, so that's uh, how we make the second type of uh, this uh, 2D parametric array. Let's have a look at the third type while we're here. And in this type, I will go number of copies and then the distance between copies. So that's the number of copies and the distance between copies. A different method, actually. And I will just erase all those and select this guy as a startup point and in here I add here as I've done in the previous example and I add another one here so that's all it's very easy same thing here by the way uh, run that and the difference in this one those code blocks doesn't actually represent uh, doesn't represent a, a range system they represent a sequence and if you notice in, in this case, when especially the second value, if you add this one to it, that means you are actually giving a sequence of number, rather a sequence system rather than a range system. Uh, let it, uh, let's just finish calculation first and then I'm going to explain that when the results comes here. might take a little bit longer, I don't know. Too long, I bet. Yep, too long. Anyway. So what happened here if you can see I, I switch those by the way so be careful I switch those ups and downs so the number of copies now this is X and I say seven and you can find that one two three four five six with the zero so they are seven and now when you add this symbol in the front of the second that's the starting area which is zero zero and for the X and zero for the Y so that mean it isn't range I'm not specifying the end up so that's why you don't find any overall thing here it's a number of it's a sequence system not a range system so that's when I need just seven and here we goes and here we need ten and you find from zero to nine which is also ten and this is the distance between the uh, between the copies and as you can find that uh, working perfectly as you can see in here now the last thing which make things more interesting is you might notice that when I create the array it isn't starting from the same position that this object start so in case if you want that to be the whole overlay starting from the same object location which really makes sense especially that's it's just my me happy coincidence i add this close to the zero zero which is as you see how that's the zero and x zero and y the starting area 
what if your object, when you try to do this in your work and this object was far away, that will make lots of issues for you because you don't want that to be moved and you don't want to move that again anyway. So let me show you how to fix this. It's a little bit, if you, if you are interesting uh, to do that, that's an advanced system of it, which basically, again, all I have changed is I changed the zero in the code block for the X and the zero here in, instead of the Y in the code block and I add that for something called SX or was our start X value. The start X value will goes to this guy. So again, let me select this dude here. Now when you select this guy, which is the select, let me run that. A little bit zoom out, run it. Now uh, see, it's started from that position, from the current position, and yes, there will be an extra copy here you might need to move or delete, otherwise you're going to get a duplicated or two copies in the same place, and I bet you don't want that. You can add later on a delete uh, node to add, to, sorry, to delete the startup element, but that's uh, a different issue if you want to add. Anyway, you start up this element here, you select it, and then you take, I just added this for me to know what the properties, you don't need that actually. You need this element.getLocation. With element.getLocation, uh, it's actually going to get the x, y, z of the starting position of the first element. And then from the point dot x, point dot y functions or nodes, you can get the x, which is this guy, and the y which is this guy out of the position of the original position and those will be fading back for this here so that's the starting point and for this for X and that's the starting point for the Y and by that you get yourself a, 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 a dynamic or a parametric 2D array that actually start from the same position for the object you can have and as I said you can add a delete function to get rid of this if you don't want or just remove that or move that manually say so you don't need to overlap their position I wish that you find this tutorial useful for you thank you for watching and have a good day